Welcome to The Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzara Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello, my fellow Americans and international listeners. I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer. Here with Stephen Ramosi. That's off to you. And Scott Thurlow. And I would like to offer you a deal for your presidency. We are discussing Vice, which I hope is an Oscar contender, unless we're, our batting average uh, starts <laughs> plummeting on our predictions. <laughs> yeah. So, Steve, would you like to start off with a funny log line? Sure. Uh, this is The Big Short 2, off the chainy. Mm-hmm. Indeed it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will discuss plot then. This movie is about the banality of Cheney. It's a discussion of who Dick Cheney, our former vice president, former secretary of defense, chief of staff, all of the, and his journey up the bureaucratic ladder of America till he became what is argued as the most powerful man in the history of America. And is really to blame for every single thing that w- is wrong. Every in catastrophe leading up to 9-11 and many thereafter as well. Yeah, I mean, you have a fire in California, Dick Cheney. Tornado, <laughs> Cheney. You have uh, people have in New Orleans. Orleans. Lawn while there's a tornado like happening, said, Dick Cheney. Like I said, yeah. But really, it's, this is an Adam McKay uh, picture. It's a very stylistic look at a moment in human history or American history, that is. And it's an interesting picture of Dick Cheney. And he admits that a lot of this is conjecture. A lot of this is I mean, his personal opinion. Narrative over, liberties, yeah. yeah. Uh, but sprinkled with the facts that we do know about. Some mm. things that I knew uh, uh, over the storied career of Dick Cheney. Mm-hmm. And other things that were surprising to me. And I want to say that the one major issue I had with this work is that it compared to the big short which had an ending this didn't know what its ending was mm. and yeah. it, it, you can because there are several points where he could have ended the work and it felt like a wrap up and then he went back in to either reiterate a point or tell more of what the life of Dick Cheney is but there's a conflict between What's well, funny, an accurate biopic of him, but because it's not an accurate biopic of him, it's a narrative sure. uh, interpretation, interpretation, if you will, of it. But and also trying to tell a good story, and I feel he kind of lost focus towards the end of this uh, and didn't know mm. where to wrap up. And for that, I'm giving you the two, but I'll let you guys discuss it. I mean, I can mostly agree with that. I, now having you mention that and thinking about it, like, yeah, it's sort of like, hey, here's a random montage, like not random, but here's a montage and a movie. And sort of like just kind of tapers off there at the end a bit. Sure, I do agree with that. So I was going to give it a three because I will say I was definitely entertained throughout. I thought it was paced pretty nicely overall. But now having said that, um, and, and you know, interspersed, we'll, we'll probably talk about it more in style, but interspersed with the little vignettes that Adam McKay is sort of known for that were similar very much to the ones he did in Big Short, just applied to this particular story, as you were saying. So yeah, I think now having talked it out a bit and you, you having mentioned that E, I'm looking at a solid two as well. So, Steve-O, what do you think? Um, I somewhat agree. I, I I think I probably will give it a two as well. Mm. But yeah. uh, um, I'm as saying. far as like the the montage that happens at the end, I kind of actually like that as a thorough wrapping up of the plot threads and like bringing back what was going on before that. But there were scenes towards the end that I felt were unnecessary to the plot, more mm. style over plot. Um, and I certainly see what you mean there, too, for sure. And, um, you know, I, I just thought there were some parts that were like, you don't need this to tell this story. But overall, it was it was really well, it was well done. 
I enjoyed it. I was I wasn't uninterested by any means, but I don't think that it had um, full narrative chops. I guess we'll say yeah. Something I, like I, that. I just don't think that it had the story in mind the entire time, and like that's not necessarily a if that's what he was going for, fine. But I don't. I'm not necessarily sure that's that's not what he was going for. I think he just kind of missed the mark a little bit on a couple of scenes that were in this movie that were included. There were a couple of points where it like not necessarily dragged, but um, felt extraneous. Mm. And for that, I'm going to give it a point off and I'm going to give it a two. Yeah. I'll say this as a final uh, thought on plot. I think actually I might be stealing this from you. E. We were discussing just after the movie, but it's almost as if um, maybe this is like indicative of Adam McKay's style, which I quite like in general, but as if he sacrifices some narrative turns just to have like, his stylistic or like little trademarks thrown in there. So like it sort of not halts the movie, but sort of interrupts it to a, a, a small degree, but to, you know, to have like a sight gag or like some visual reference or something that isn't quite maybe relative to the plot at large. All right. So I'm going to make a comparison. Uh, Oliver Stone biopics, hmm. which are also more interested in uh, the narrative that Oliver Stone wants to depict than necessarily the, accurate truth. Sure. And, I don't fault him for that. I'm. I knew going in because, uh, like for instance, with the Big Short, like I know that that's not probably the whole story, but it's the most interesting story about the subject that mm. I'm going to hear. I think he did a great job of making a very banal and very evil person, uh, maybe not even evil, but a very banal person, accessible, accessible to mm. the audience, and him telling a story. And again, I will. Yeah. Not fault him for that because I think I could see why a lot of people will dislike this movie. Whether people who think it's an unfair portrayal of uh, Dick Cheney or if it's not attacking him enough, mm. like why are you humanizing him at any point? And I think he addresses that in the uh, post credit sequence. But <laughs> yeah, true. But I think that again, he, it's it is it's style and narrative over truth, but. But it tells still, a story mostly still. works. It's all like Adam McKay is kind of establishing himself as like a um, less biased Michael Moore, I guess, <laughs> to an extent. I mean, he came from the same it's a fine comparison. Chops. Like yeah. Michael Moore came from uh, directing comedy comedies and went into doing documentaries. Um, sure, sure, yeah. And I think that it kind of feels the same way to me, except for Michael Moore has more of a. Uh, or a bias to him, I guess. Yeah, also, Michael Moore, though, is more straight up documentary, where this isn't pre- pretending. Big Short was a little bit more documentary style than this. This was much more of a movie first, and True. then yeah, uh, exactly. Factual basis second. So that's where the difference. That's why I made the Oliver Stone yeah. Uh, comparison. Yeah, I thought that was quite. You know, that's pretty spot on. So yeah, I think um, you've convinced me that it deserves a solid two, but. Maybe not a three, although I would have been, I could have been convinced giving it a three going into it, but I'll stick with a two for plot. Yeah, I'm good with a two. All right, Scott, themes. Uh, power corrupts everybody. Um, if you want to become the most powerful man, just make sure you're the smartest guy out thinking everybody, I guess. Like, that, of course, is the surface, like, level. Everybody thing. or just Dick Cheney? Or, like, the, yeah, <laughs> the people that he uh, happened to be uh, around out thinking, I guess we'll say. So, like, I don't know, man, like, that's certainly, it seems an obvious one. And you just mentioned it, like, I feel as if we can go, like, have a super deep conversation or just be like, hey, he's not trying to say all that much. He's trying to make, like, again, a, a big shortish kind of movie. But I certainly think he's not, he, Adam McKay is not, is putting themes in there. He's not ignoring this altogether. But I think that, like, because of sort of the whirlwind of, of how it's put together, you can get a lot out of it because, of course, it's about American politics. It's about that, that presidency and, like, the Iraq war and everything that surrounded all that. And this is, like, sort of, like, the not a focal point, but certainly th- that's a big aspect of the film because of Cheney's involvement and all that. So I'll open it up. Like, wh- what do you think? Like, is the if that's not the most obvious, the one that he's going for the most? Okay, so this is an exploration of Dick Cheney at its heart, but also the kind of person that pursues mm, Dick Cheney's this path career mm. and the fact that it's he, the uh, Adam McKay expressly says that we don't know we can't we can't read his mind like is he a shakespearean villain <laughs> lying in bed with his wife like plotting uh, yeah. uh, giving these great scene yeah, yeah. Great which scene. i loved as well style again but and then they cut to them just like what well, it's most likely it's just like you want to do this yeah i'm thinking about it and like let me it's just as simple as that that 
Is he the man that you want him to be in the nefarious yeah. villain? Is he Machiavelli who, or yeah? Who destroys everyone in his path, or is he just a good bureaucrat? <laughs> um, sure. And working his way. That's up that. a good point. And what's scarier? And I think it's it's better to think of the people who cause such destruction, like destruction in the world, is, uh, that that they are a powerful figure. That it's not just it's some kind of sort of like a random chaotic convergence, if you will. Or just it's someone who just wandered the correct path, and mm. that, and when he. Re- because all he was was about achieving the next level of power, not for any ideological reasons, not to actually do anything with it. It's just that I, if we go to war with Iraq, it could further justification my, yeah. for my power. It was never about achieving any specific height. thing. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a very fascinating look at that person. Again, it could be completely wrong, and but it's just kind of a musing over what mm. a character like this is like. Yeah. And I think this is an important. F- film for that reason yeah i think it's no, that's a good point really yeah. fascinating yeah. to like look at um kind of what the impetus to power is as you were saying like you know what what caused this to happen and i think one of the big uh important themes of this is looking at what the you know in terms of like the world events like the butterfly effect right like mm. what caused dick cheney was like him getting into a couple fights in school, getting kicked out of school, and like his wife to be saying, "I'm not going to put up with you anymore if you don't straighten up, straighten up." And from that point on, like at least that's what the movie is trying to say is like from that point on, that changed his life, put him on an irrevocable quest to go attain more power throughout this entire, you know, throughout the last that is seventy year years or whatever, and. Like, that is what made Dick Cheney perhaps the most uh, violent person in the last, you know, since World War II. Is his wife was like, I'm sick of you getting into fights at school and getting kicked out. <laughs> and like, getting drunk and me having to bail your ass out of jail. One of the more fascinating scenes is he's. It's why he's a Republican instead of a Democrat is because Donald Rumsfeld gave a speech, exactly. and the guy next to him was like, "Hey, um, do you mind?" Uh, who was his kind of a partner? Not he was partner, like a fellow but, intern fellow, recruit or whatever. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go become a Democrat. Like, um, uh, one of us can be a Democrat, one of us can be a Republican. I kind of want to do it. You mind? He's like, "I'll be a Republican, sure." He could have very well have gone the, the path of Democrat. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, Bill Clinton could have uh, bombed Kosovo or something like that. <laughs> a terrible world. To butterfly effect. <laughs> okay, but no, like, oh god. Like Sorry. I said, like I said at the outset, like the allure of power. We're getting into politics now, guys. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we do have to discuss politics to a general degree in a film about Dick Cheney, for sure. I'll try not to make too many snide comments, <laughs> sure, or but no. bait uh, Stephen. But that was a good. That We're was... on. Hey, that's not a bait. <laughs> Whatever. No, there's no bait. Anyway, but no, I was. I will back up E, or at least you. <laughs> you maybe like sort of come to or come around to realizing that or to the way of thinking that yeah that's probably what he's most going for and it is fascinating to think about like should we because we don't know all the actual ins and outs we don't have access to what he was thinking and planning at the time so all we have is like what is left to build like the shell upon which to build a narrative from so therefore like yeah are like the greatest quote-unquote villains of history like nefariously in the outside it's like the, there's a there's a law for this it's like don't mistake uh villainy or like malice just for stupidity or incompetence mm-hmm. in a sense. So I don't think it's quite that. But it is fascinating to think about like how the turn of events like unfolded and give it could have like easily gone like slightly different. And of course that would have like as you said, see if snowball butterfly affected. But no, it's it's a fascinating look at a certain figurehead in our American politics that seem to run run and do their job a little bit differently. <laughs> Yeah. And the repercussions of all that. So it's also great, like the the speech he gives at the end of the movie, where he's like, "I would you have wanted me to do anything differently? I, you know, I'm not going to apologize for saving all your families, stuff like that." And it's like a really interesting speech because none of this movie makes it seem like that was it. He was interested in any of that at he, all, he wasn't. even for a half a second. And I don't believe that he was by any means. <laughs> sure, but like the best part is like he could use that as his like this is what 
politicians do. And that, like, throughout the course of this movie, that, that him speaking directly to the audience was mm. the most that he ever felt like a politician while I was watching this movie when it was when he was saying, I'm not going to apologize for saving your families and, like, putting, like, that wasn't what he, like, clearly that wasn't what he was going, like, he was, what he was trying to do. But putting that into the film makes it clear kind of just what, um, themes that politicians are trying to get you to buy as they're selling you as they're shoveling shit in your fucking mm. backyard you know what do we believe <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah right that, that's true but like, and, and so for that reason I, I'm, I'm gonna give this a strong one for for that and and you know the other reasons and various other know. myriad aspects sure no you guys um did make a good point there and i'm gonna give it a pretty solid one as well okay steven antagonist antagonist i i mean so I don't know if this movie wants me to think that Dick Cheney is the protagonist, but he's certainly not my protagonist. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good ref. I think that Cheney is the person that this movie is trying to get you to see as the distrust answer. at mm-hmm. least. And like, um, you have to understand that every, um, negative thing that happens in this film is catalyzed by Cheney, right? Like I mean many things, not everything, but I, I do I get I see what you're saying. I mean, yes. Nixon overstepping his boundaries like like that had a negative impact <laughs> on uh, on his political career uh, earlier. Yeah. So like it's really the that fault had, of other people. I would say that had a positive impact on Cheney. That's true. <laughs> he got into politics because of that. Yeah. Nixon was maybe Nixon's the protagonist of this movie. No. Nixon's always the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't see. I don't know. We're talking about antagonists. I also went into protagonists. Uh, I oh, see Cheney as it. a s- strong, well done, humanized antagonist, which is what I really like about antagonists. Is like, I hate them, but I can you identify can with them at me. certain points, and like I can I understand where they're coming from. To an extent, not that I agree with it, but uh, I want to know that they are not like a completely alien thing with like in an unintelligible um, feelings and wants and, and things like that. And I think this movie does a really good job of portraying Cheney in that uh, respect. So I, I don't know. What do you guys? I'll say. Uh, I guess it kind of depends, right? Because. I, again, I was saying this to uh, precast that it's not like necessarily a hit piece on Cheney. It's a, a, a portrait, if you will, a look into a, a possible window into his life and possible inner at, at motivations. At times, it's certainly a middle finger to him. Yeah, it, yeah, at times, but not always what I'm saying, yeah. right? It's not always attacking him. As you just said, Steve-O, he is portrayed somewhat, again, to a relative degree, sympathetically. Again, like the, your mileage may vary. Oh, don't get me wrong. I but think it, this movie it, is against yeah. Cheney. <laughs> right, but he's not like but, vilified at every turn and corner of the fucking film. Yeah, right. Right. So, like, it's almost as if it depends, like, who you are, what what side you fall on, whether you think he's the antagonist or the protagonist of this story. Oh, it's a litmus test. Awesome. Yeah, but like you said, like almost like what you just said about themes, really. What we all just said. And I think that could be too. I would like to talk to somebody who's like much more on the conservative side to see what they think of this if they're like oh fuck this movie or if they are like oh yeah like Cheney was awesome because <laughs> mm. sure. of how this movie is like so, Cheney like, was awesome I guess you can get like that angle of it so like, that might like depend like how your own personal scores but for me personally I'm going to say that I'm putting him in protagonist territory so now I, that means then I'm not sure how to answer antagonist because if if I take that angle then what's antagonizing Dick Cheney well, overall? I think this means we're going to have to combine the two uh, for this discussion. Because mm. I agree with you that he's a protagonist. He's well, not you. heroic. He's, oh, yeah, to me he is because I like a powerful figure. <laughs> who, I'm uh, just saying that's how I interpreted conquers the, the film. He put, yeah. um, Big fan of Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I am. Um, right. Uh, uh, who's the uh, shady uh, foreign policy guy? Iago. What? Iago. What? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, the shitty foreign uh, policy guy. Terrible. That's, um, <laughs> I like Iago as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, obviously uh, I know. Um, uh, it's just K. Word. Uh, K? Well, no, 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 recently? Uh, he, he, he manufactured the Vietnam War. 
family. Kissinger? Kissinger, Kissinger, Oh, Kissinger. Yeah. Yeah. I like how Dick Cheney put Kissinger in his place. Uh, (laughs) Anyone who does that is a hero of mine. (laughs) So it's all just uh, layers of villainy. Uh, Like, uh, uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend over there. Uh, But no, I think that he was portrayed very well. I think we weren't supposed to like him, but we're supposed to sympathize with him. And you made a very good point to him being an antagonist, but he's an anti-hero in here in a way that we're following his story. That's yeah, And I don't think, here's the problem is, I don't think the story really had him ever shown in conflict. I think he's always been a powerful figure. Uh, And the repercussions of his actions were what's interesting. It's, but not necessarily the conflicts that he had when he Based, arose to power. Yeah. Like, so I'm going to give it a zero to antagonist and a one to protagonist. That's kind of how I'm cutting it up too. Like, like I said, I understand that's not the only be all and all interpretation of it, but it's the one that I sort of had, like uh, initially slash viscerally and even now discussing it. So yeah, so I'm going to do very much similar thing and give it sort of a default zero because I guess my final thesis is if I interpret um, Janie to be the protagonist. Like, so what was he overcoming? Like, he pretty much overcame. Like, the entire point of it was his rise to power, and like how sort of e- he how overcome? sort of easily, right? Like he he had his problems, right? But he solved and them then, because and, he well, was. And, yeah, but how? It was like he had his problems, and then boop, I'm done with those. <laughs> Jan- Janie's heart was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. That is Jamie's heart true. was the antagonist. Yeah, that's the only thing he has. To- <laughs> well, if you, if you think it as his own body was the antagonist to him, you can get like a rabbit hole there. I, I mean, but he fucking the- conquered that with the ease every single time too. Uh, actually, one of my favorite things to do here, and uh, the one of the great middle fingers is the heartless body of him that they kind of they dwell on for a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, like, like it, it's such a, it's such a heartless man. It's a visual metaphor that yes, his sure. heart's what gives problems until he stole it from <laughs> another man. Uh, sure. Like that is all contained I like that the therein. Guy, I like that the guy that gave him the heart was the narrator uh, the, the entire time. Uh, I'm sorry if you're ruining it for you, anybody who hasn't seen this movie yet. But uh, go fucking watch the movie, jerks. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that rant. Anyway, I'm sticking with the zero for end tag just because of the way I'm interpreting it. But. So zero end tag, one pro tag for the two of you? Yes. Yeah. Opposite for me. All right. Yeah, and like I said, cool. that's perfectly valid. It just, and, uh, I think, depends yeah. how you fall on that. Yeah. Okay, so Scott, it's on to you with supporting characters. All right, I'm going to give them uh, all collectively a one. I guess we'll say a standout is, for me, it's Sam Rockwell. I always love him, and him as George W. Bush was pretty excellent. Mm-hmm. We were saying, like, it might be one of the best impressions of him that you've seen, like, because it's not exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, be, <laughs> right? Like, that is certainly in the film, but it's not, like, <laughs> the over-the-top version that everyone, like, probably, like, recognize from Will Farrow and, like, other, you know, impressions and so forth, other comedians, because, of course, they want to ground it in more realistic terms. So he's not, like, again, caricatured, per se, but certainly, like, Steve Carell as Rumfield was great. Mm. I mean, Tyler Perry plays uh, Colin Powell. Like, that's all. Like, I didn't even recognize him at first. I like, took him, like, another scene or two to, when he was back on. I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> that is him. Yeah. Right? So, like, it's all, like, it's the inner circle, the inner chamber. Like, you got Cheney's lawyer, David. I can't remember his real name. But um, the guy who played him was quite good. Uh, out, you said Alfred Molino is randomly in it in a, one of a, a, a funny and stand-up As sort a of, bizarre waiter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, one of his visual, like, sort of, like, cut to, like, uh, scenes. So yeah, um, I feel like Alfred Molina had a day off, and he was like, "You sure, want to come be on a yeah. movie?" <laughs> sure, fuck it. But yeah, I'm, I'm, they're all. It was. It's an ensemble cast, pretty much. Like uh, Amy Adams certainly as Lynn is quite good. Yeah, for sure. I think she like matched uh, Christian Bale's like his, his uh, transforming, if you will, into Cheney. So yeah, <laughs> she's the real villain. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's the real antagonist. No, she made him. <laughs> maybe she's the protagonist. And she could destroy him. Perhaps. And even uh, and, and his uh, daughters, uh, Lynn and Elizabeth, oh, yeah. who were played um, by two actresses, Lily Rabe and Cameron Millen's name. But they were both in American Art Story. As, Liz, Liz and Miriam. Miriam. Yeah. But yeah, I think they were all damn solid and all, again, filled out Cheney's world, if you will, and those who like his family life and his political friends and allies and even enemies and so forth. I th- so I think collectively, I'm given supporting a very, very solid one. Yeah, I mean... Uh, not sure if I left much for you guys to talk about. Sorry. People you didn't mention, uh, Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> yes, yes, true. St- uh, Antonin Scalia. <laughs> mm-hmm. Scalia, you're right. And He's Ro- better left unsaid. And Roger Ailes. Those oh. are the ones that I had. Uh, but yeah, like I, I thought that everybody did a great job, uh, especially the big name actors who were in this, yep. uh, Sam Rockwell, Christian Bale. Um, 
I had a an argument with a friend of mine who shall re- name remain nameless, whose name is Pam, uh, that uh, Martin Short was in this. She thought he was. I thought he was not. Uh, so if anybody can uh, confirm or disconfirm, that'd be great. Sure I, I didn't look it. I didn't look it up right. because I didn't want to ruin the surprise for myself. You want an anecdote? We'll make I, it, want, we'll I want. I want. I want one of our fans to let us know. Two brothers, none. Um, <laughs> I have to say that every single politician here who has acted perfectly, uh, George W., George H. W., mm-hmm. uh, like every, every, every single George one. W. was great. Yeah. I will, I will, I will, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't. He was only there for a little bit, but he was still pretty good. He was, he was really good. For sure. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, it's like, so, I don't know, overall, this was a, if anything else, if they, if they only had the facts they had good portrayals of these people to make it yeah. feel very realistic. Yeah, I agree. So, a mm-hmm. one. For sure. All right, Steven. Well said. Yes? Dialogue. Um, I thought that the, the dialogue in this movie was pretty spot on. It was pretty terrific. I didn't expect much less. I enjoy McKay scripts, mm. and this one did not disappoint. I don't have that much to say about it. I thought that it was very believable and not only that but like uh, witty and sharp without going over the top. too much yes and that's all i really look for in a movie like this you know I'm, i don't need it to blow my mind uh with its cleverness or anything like that although at points when when it went into the shakespearean dialogue yeah, yeah. that was great uh and you know there were a couple other points where i was like oh this script is really good um but overall, it just did what it did and got out of the way for the plot and the style. So I, I really liked what they did with the dialogue in this, and I'm going to give it a one. Again, the portrayals of the characters have to be reminiscent of people's memories of them. And the dialogue matched. Like I believe this is what George W. Bush would have said. Yeah. I believe mm. this is what Dick Cheney exactly. would have said in the scenario. And that is all that needed to be required here, and they surpassed that with being funny, as you mentioned. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with both of that. Uh, that was uh, what what you just said. Is what I was going to say first is that it, they were all believable situations. And then when it's like sometimes there was even snappier, you know, like a sort of back and forth, like a really funny gag or clever joke thrown in to what ostensibly were just like sort of day to day mundane conversations that they would be having. I don't think that Dick Cheney had anything but mundane conversations. <laughs> yeah, but like they were still like they were still very engaging, very compelling for that. Because I agree, um, Adam McKay also wrote and directed this, so like he knows how to, uh, I think, find a nice balance between that and like, a lot of it. Like sort of combines with the style. I'll say like some of the the dialogue. Like also, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have been as strong or perhaps as funny in certain parts if it wasn't like combined with some other like stylistic element that was also happening. Or like that was immediately cut to or something like that, which we'll discuss in a second. But yeah, I'm definitely giving uh, dialogue a one because I thought it was clever. The script was like, like I said, uh, like you said, Steve was well strong, sort of snappy, without being too like in your face about it, like being too like haha, clever, clever, look at us. So yeah, very solid. And also, like you said, yeah, the portrayals uh, yeah. went a long way to selling it all. Okay. Yeah. So is on to me with style. I guess that's a one for everyone. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. So it's on to me with style, and this is. We keep saying this guy's name, which is good because it's going to pound <laughs> it into our heads. Adam McKay, he has his own unique way of It's unmistakably yeah. 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 And I really liked Big Short. This continued that tradition. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like, I don't have much. Like, he he enters uh, realistic scenarios with uh, kind of visual metaphors and like puns gags. gags. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, when Dick Cheney was talking with George W. Bush and trying to get as much power for the vice president as possible, it's interspersed with uh, fishing as he's slowly uh, luring he's like the first thing along. Yeah. So, again, it, it all works for me. This is I really enjoy his style, so I'm going to give it a one. Yeah, I'll say uh, one of the best jokes gags for me is, uh, sorry, spoiler if you haven't seen it, is there's a fake ending where like it's about midway, maybe like 40, 45 percent through the movie. 
and just starts cuts the credits like <laughs> and then dick cheney lived a very uh private life with his family and uh lynn went on to like all this like fake stuff almost like a possible alternative history that obviously didn't happen and like like little credits start going across yeah. the screen and then it cuts to black of course and it goes on with the actual story so that was fantastic Oh, uh, yeah, the Shakespearean thing, like, who knows? Maybe they were taking, like, they're making Macbethian speeches to each other in bed, and it, like, literally cuts to them yeah. doing that. Like, yeah. So Adam McKay knows how to, like, I think, weave that stuff in there very nicely. And a lot of it, like, it's not all non sequiturs. Many of it is, like, tied in or has some kind of, again, like, double entendre or visual reference to what's happening uh, as well with the actual characters. And even the shots themselves perfectly fine. But, yeah, like, he certainly knows how to insert things like that that will make a mundane situation what would be mundane, like a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more engaging, but still grounded in reality for the most part. So he definitely has a unique style to him, and I'm very interested in seeing more from him, and I'm giving style here a very strong one, possibly the strongest part of this film. Yeah, I'm going to give style one as well. Uh, McKay really goes all in on style in his movies, and that is more obvious in this one than perhaps any of them before. Mm. Like you said with the credit sequence are in the middle of the movie um there's the whole montage at the end mm, yep there's i don't know like all throughout this film there are like little stylistic i think they're almost like laser targeted placed too that right? are just that he's he he like lays them in subtly and then he's like oh let's go for let's go for a home run on this yeah. one and just like does a really obvious like mm. Wow, what the hell is going on? Like, way he really screws with uh, kind of the template of what this type of movie is supposed to but be, but without making alien- it, it alienating, I'll say, right. which I think is a you know pretty like a, that's that's takes talent to do. Yeah, exactly. It's a fine like, line. You know, just using something like that as a as a joke and overlaying it into a movie is um a little bit risky. You sure. know, like especially it might not always work for sure, <laughs> especially like. Going to a credit sequence right in the middle of the movie is like a little bit risky of a joke, and like it goes nah, on for a while. Maybe, but like, I mean, it goes maybe on for a while. Me, I mean, it worked. Yeah. But if it didn't work, it could but have maybe just me. Like, but I really it could have been just a shit. real dead spot in the middle of the movie. Yeah. You know? Oh, uh, and it, we had a pretty packed theater, and it was, I think, about a quarter of the theater had our sensibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was there was two people nearby uh, that, where we were sitting, Scott, laughing, uh, that laughing regularly. Laughed. Yeah. But it wasn't raucous laughter. Right. So I think that and like I think that's I think that was what happened in our theater too. Is like a lot of people were like, "What the hell's going on?" Like you know, mm-hmm. not really understanding that this is a joke. I will say this though, I think, but I love that I love that he, that he went for that joke. I know? think again, Ian and I were discussing uh, just after that. It's almost as if uh, McKay sort of assumes a level of intelligence and like knowledge on on the part of his audience, and if yeah. you're not quite there, then you're not gonna you know you won't think it, it as funny or get like a little reference or a gag or whatever. No, he does make some risky jokes that are targeted at people who have more knowledge than others yeah. um, in politics. And, and, and sometimes just in film, like, you know, in general, like movies in general, that is like stories. Yeah. But no, yeah. For all that, I think very strong one, like I said, maybe my favorite part of this film. But um, yeah, I, I agree. I'm going to give it a one as well. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll leave it at that. Uh, After night. That's it. Okay. Uh, Scott, recommendation. Uh, yes, I do recommend Vice. I think it was quite, like I said, quite entertaining. Yeah, sure. Like it may not be up everyone's alley, but I think it's within the purview of like all these people who listen to us. I would like to think, and it's just again a, a highly entertaining movie. And if you know a bit about um, or remember uh, the circumstances, then I think you get a bit more out of it. But if you don't know all that much, it the movie itself tells you we're filling in as many blanks as we possibly can with our creative liberties. So we know what we know, and then the rest of it is sort of like, made, not made up, but you know, stitched together, if you will. And yeah, I think it's a damn good movie uh, overall. It might be a little long. I, I'll say it didn't feel long, but I think I think when we said in plot, it could have been maybe just a little little bit more edited, trimmed, a tiny bit. But other than that, yeah, I think it's fucking solid as hell, and I, I recommend it. I don't think this is for every... I think this is actually for quite a niche audience. Um, because it can offend a lot of people who take politics seriously. Because mm. this doesn't take – it takes the piss out of both – more more so sure. Republican conservative values. But, That's true. But in general, just political and occasionally folks want at liberals as well. And I think that anyone who goes, like, politics is important. We should take it seriously might come out a little bit 
angry that this isn't more this serious is not doing work. That. No. Um, and you can, I've actually read a couple articles about people who were lambasting this beca- uh, because, because it didn't do on it on both sides. So, um, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it because everything should be mocked. Um, especially, uh, as long as, punch, as long as you punch, as long as you punch up, up. Yeah. and uh, certainly, I mean, Dick Cheney is certainly. Uh, Sorry, okay. I don't know how much more up you can punch exactly. versus Dick Cheney. So, so uh, no, good on this, and I think this brought up a lot of good points. And I think it should be seen. Hmm. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I think I'm gonna. Oh, well, I'm definitely gonna give it a one for recommendation. Um, check it out. Watch the movie. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, having said that, where does that uh, eight, leave us? Eight, eight, and a total of eight. All eights? All right, yeah. And like, I think that's pretty spot on. It's not like fucking amazing. It's a good to great movie, I'll yeah. say, and certainly worth watching. And if you catch it, you'll probably have a good time, again, depending who you are. But for the for the most part, I think you'll get a kick out of it and have a good time. That's a good wrap-up. And uh, on behalf of America, we're sorry. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Manzer here with Cedar Rossi. Adieu. It's got and we thank you for your service. Good night. Editing and engineering by Jonathan Ian Manser. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows. And on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods? <laughs>